All right, tell me the story on this one because there's something about April Fool's April Day. April Fool's Day, yeah. 1987. 1987, we're fishing out of a rental boat down there. And sure enough, we're getting fish on that Texas rig form. The uh, motor off with the blue flake. And that's the day that Marvin Gaye was killed. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, you know, I'd hate to say it, but that was the day. I hate to, uh, you know, relate that to it, but that happened on that day when we got back and we heard the news. We couldn't believe that. Wow. But it was on that day when that happened. Now, the fish that's supposed to be, it was a mount. And it was Robert's fish mount. Okay, yeah, Robert did my big fish. Yeah, yeah. Robert's Robert fish Munoz. Mount. Robert Munoz. Yeah, he's the one did the fish. Oh, but wow. Some oh, man, reason, look at these things. He took the fish, and I guess somebody offered him for a restaurant. And he wind up selling it to them and putting their restaurant. Really? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, come on, Robert. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, well, where's the fish at? And the guys couldn't find it or whatever. Oh, man. And, I, and this is all I, they had left. <laughs> mm. I never got the fish. That's a consolation prize, Zero. Oh, that's, like, oh. that's a sweet jacket, though. You still got that thing? Oh, yeah. Do you? Oh, man. Look at that. Right here. That jacket is. Oh, yeah. This is custom made, one of a kind. What? <laughs> yeah. This was made at Bates Leather out of uh, Long Beach. Yeah. That's so cool. Really Design this for me because I always saw like it. the shoulders in the front from your pictures, but I had no idea there was an actual bass on the back. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the thing up there. Wow. But yeah, that's yeah, rad. Was, had this a long time, man. <laughs> that's so cool. But yeah, you never see another one like this. Mm, might yeah. have to bring that back. Yeah, they made that for me at the time. But I know, yeah, you're right. You probably just seen. Pictures yeah, I always just kind of saw that angle, right? Yeah, you never seen the back. Never seen. I had no idea that was on the back. That's cool. Yeah. That you still got it. Yep. Yeah. And see, like, just yeah. seeing all these different newspaper clips and all these articles and such, there doesn't seem to be that kind of filter um, anymore in today's kind of fishing media. Right. Anybody can jump on and create their own account, account and, yeah. and paint whatever picture you had to paint. But back then when you were doing this, you know, you had to go through editors and they had to make sure what you were doing was legitimate. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, there, there's a lot of that that's kind of missing, I think, these days. You know, you're in the Lunker Club there from Bassmaster Magazine. This here is out of Bassmaster. I don't know if you read that. That's a pretty neat article. Wow, look at that. The way he, he, he wrote that. That look was here. Really, really cool when he did that. And that's for everyday anglers. That's, that is like super I am. cool. <laughs> that's it, man. And Casitas Lake, they were kind enough to promote their lake with a couple of fish I caught up there. And there's that jacket. There's the jacket, yeah. yeah for there it is. Again. Is that it? The same one? Oh, no, that's a different one there. That's a different one. Big old stripers. Man. Yeah. And then, uh, Jim Lumos Magazine advertising their rods. That's awesome. Now, between the two species, uh, the big stripers and the largemouth, which do you prefer to catch? Either one. I They're both just, up there, huh? I was had a pattern going. Uh-huh. Casitas Lake was when it started to fade out and say around June, then I would jump over to the stripers because the big okay. stripers are around. Yeah. So I would fish for them and all the way up until probably December. And then from December, uh, till the end of December, I kind of dropped them, go back to largemouth because you know they didn't pre-spawn in January. Right. So I'll start back at Casitas. And I had that pattern going for years. And then of course, uh, Casitas, it faded out and then pyramid they had a lot of bait going on mm. they was getting trout plants and then when they started trout plants up there in i think 2001 that's when i first started uh fishing there oh I, really okay yeah, i hadn't fished there before then huh. so the guys kept calling me about you know you should come try up here that's when we, i was working at turner's turner's yeah 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 and i'm like well what's going on he said well we losing these fish 
And I'm like, what are you using? He said he was using zero spooks. Oh, wow. And I said, well, uh, if it, what about them pencil popper baits? What are you talking about? So I went up anyway. So I just went up, started fishing with the guys, and uh, I saw what was going on. So I took a popper, and the popper made for stripers. Was this like maybe one of those Oki plugs? Remember those things? Yeah, I saw those too. Yeah, and, and then uh, so there was a couple of, like local guys that were making that style making plug. That, yeah, making those plugs. Uh -huh. But I got locked in on that pencil popper, mm. and it was calling them up. And then uh, the, the hooks was much bigger. Okay. And the, the Zero Spooks was made for largemouth. Right. They didn't have the right hooks. So but they were bending them out and twisting them off. off. and. So uh, I wind up. Seen one of the guys on the lake, and he showed me what his bait looked like. And I pulled over to him. I took my uh, cutters, cut the hook off, and said, "Okay, go ahead and fish." And he's like, "What?" <laughs> I said, "Why you keep bending it back? That's why you're losing them." So I said, "Put a better hook. So yeah. stop somewhere and put a better hook because if you get bending them out, the, obviously the fish are too big." Yeah. And sure enough. Uh, messed around with the popper, and I wind up getting a 20 pounder. Nice. And, I, and he's like, you couldn't have got that on there. And I'm saying, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. And the guy lives up in up in uh, Fraser Park. Okay. They called me to come fishing up there. Gotcha. Yeah, I took him a couple of trips, and then we fished together. He like he said, now I saw it with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and sure enough, he saw how I was catching these fish. And he said, I've been living up here for 40 years. Oh, my and goodness. I said, and you had this here all the time? Yeah. And uh, he just kept fishing the smaller baits. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, these fish are pretty big. I yeah. think you need to go to something else. And sure enough, I used the popper um, and the Optima. Mm -hmm. I started sinking the Optima up there. Okay. And I was getting good fish. Oh, I couldn't man. go to swim baits, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I like both of them. Large Mop was my first because yeah, that's I, I didn't find the striper bite till later on and then once they got start catching the trophy ones uh -huh. then that's when I really got interested in it and I still like catching the scooty one because it's nothing like seeing them ball oh the it's so much but fun that was so much fun just so like much fun but yeah I, I at the time I fish half of the year for largemouth and half for uh, striper okay because I know the largemouth they prime time was going to be from January up and I didn't caught big fish all the way up to July. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So uh, the stripers usually start biting around uh, uh, when they start schooling up. You know? So I'll fish through them and then October is when the big fish show up when the cools the water cools off. Okay. And then when the trout hit the water, that's when I'll stick with the stripers and I fish for them until December. Then I pretty much uh, kind of quit and then I'll go back to large mouth. So I had that pattern up until probably 2008. Okay. And then uh, after they had the quagga muscle issue come mm -hmm. up, that's when this article came out. Right before the lake closed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and that's what that article states. That was it the first came, lake I got uh, kicked out of in quarantine. Quarantine. From. From. It uh, was Cetus. And that was the week of the quarantine. So oh. I went that week before, like the article said, in case if the lake closed. And I got my last 12 pounder and it hit the front page because of that. Yeah, oh, man, that was, those are yeah. scary times. You know, they were yeah. talking about shutting the lake out Shut, like, yeah. completely. And so, and it, also too, they didn't know really what this thing going to do. Mm -hmm. All it's do is going to cost money to clean the filters and uh, it's going to clog up uh, their generators or whatever. It's going to mm -hmm. cost them, what, fifty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to send divers down to do this. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to hurt the lake, per se. You know, they don't want them in there. But mm -hmm. cause look at me, look at the San Diego lakes. Oh, yeah. They all survive it. Yeah, uh, even the Great Lakes yeah. where, you know. Yeah, I mean, you don't want them in there, but what are you going to do? Uh, it's a matter of time, probably. And, and, and that's the thing. It's a matter of time before they get in. Because you see Pyramid, they didn't find them up there and mm -hmm. you know they're going to be where castaic next right oh yeah yeah so what are you going to do and our, our lakes are not managed no they're not not very well no. I, I wish i wish california put in the effort that texas did yeah I you know, they into managing bears. not that texas has done everything right yeah, they've but they a couple of letters more but into it than what our california yeah absolutely yeah, night and day we got a bait problem here 
for and look at the fish at uh, Pyramid the last few years. The uh, fish are so skinny. Oh yeah. And the heads are so big on the wind fish. socks. Yeah, oh, yeah they look yeah. terrible. Look at that, and uh, and then the same thing at uh, Casitas Lake. We have a chance. Mm-hmm. We had one in the rains that we had could have put water in the lake. They chose to let the water run to the ocean. Mind blowing. Uh, how, how could you let that happen? And oh. what's the explanation of that? I've watched that, that lake come up almost 20 feet overnight, Doc. Yeah, with a hard rain. Yeah, like, yeah. whoa. Well, that's because they had the chutes open at the uh. time. Because, you know, when you come into the lake, yeah. right to the road. Right, right. Yeah, if that is open up, the water is going to run through there. I, I had been camping up there. And oh, I'll go down wow. at night and, and rains, and I could just see the water just gushing through. Because that place is always stained when we had a, yeah. a big rain. And then at the mouth of that, of course, that's one of the best spots to fish, right? Where the clear and that muddy water, uh, you know, especially yeah. on swim baits. Oh, yeah. Because all they feel is vibration, mm-hmm. you know. And you fish Don't tell them all the secrets, Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't tell them all the secrets. And sure enough. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, yeah, that's the only problem with our lakes. They're not managed right. And I know there are reservoirs for us to drink. Yeah, water. the fishing is not even secondary. It's like way at the it, bottom of the it's list. It's at the bottom. Yeah, but it still should be managed it's still for recreation. Yeah. Yeah, because they dare to uh, to make money. They charge you fees for oh, it. Oh yes, they do. <laughs> they charge you fees, so you would figure you still want to uh, yeah. keep the lakes going. Oh, that's the uh, small mouth I caught. The, uh, the, 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 oh, so that was the recent one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look was, at that! Still continuing to add on to the trophy pile. Yeah. We went up there Gosh, that's right before fish. Christmas. Yeah, I remember yeah. I was talking to you on the phone, I think, uh, about coming back down here yeah. and connecting with you, and you were talking about going to Havasu. Yeah, so we went for a couple of days, and nice. man, we caught a bunch of strippers up there. That's awesome. So tell me about this first mount here with the Worm King in it. Oh, yeah, that was the first one. That's the, that uh, was the one, huh? Yeah. What is that, a 27, 28 inch fish? Yeah, I think 28 and change. Yeah, the worm king. What did you, and what did this one weigh? Yeah, that one weighed uh, 13, 13 wow. nine, and and it's twin. The other one out there is 14 one. Now, there's been a um, a prevalence of people claiming they're catching fish bigger than they actually they are, are, man. Yeah. And you know, when you see what an actual 13 pounder actually looks like in its actual dimensions. Mm-hmm. It, it's hard to dispute, and, and it's a shame because people should take pride in the fact that you know they're catching nice fish, whether it's eight, eight nine, nine, ten, whatever, eleven whatever pounds. Yeah. yeah, whatever it is, just appreciate it for what it is. You don't have to fluff it and you know try to claim that it's bigger than it really is, man. Because eight pounder is a good fish. Mm-hmm. Nine pounder, because look at those right there. That's right. Yeah, both of those is eight and nine and a half. Yeah, beautiful fish. Yeah. You know, and when you when you come across someone like you, Doc, that's held <laughs> and seen as many big fish as you have, and you know I've seen a couple in my day now. Like you can just tell. Yeah. Like right off the, the bat, like uh, yeah. how big did you think that was? Yeah, the same thing with strikers. Okay. You see them. Oh yeah. The and the guy telling me it's. 25 pounds and I look at the ones I got up here and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, and that's, like you said, after you done caught a bunch of fish. Oh, right? man. And you're going to have to look at the girth and look at all the fish. Um, yeah. That's the one activity I caught on Labor Day. Oh, um, wow. Um, that was it's Labor still Day. Summer time fish. See how long that fish is? I can't really see the fish, man. I'm, uh, I'm distracted by those guns, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was a younger day there. Shoot you. Uh, yeah, oh, that was a young fellow right there. That's yeah. great. That <laughs> is a huge frame. Yeah, look, at, look at the frame and even the girth for a fish on, on uh, in September. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, imagine that. Oh, she had two or three trout in her. She oh, yeah. been a beast. Yep. And, you know, plus the just body weight and size. And, they, and that went over 13 at the time. Imagine, and this fish here, that was one of the fish that Randy saw me catch out in the marina. I remember <laughs> seeing this picture. <laughs> and he was like, where is that fish? Go bring it up here. That's uh, great. Because he was yelling out the window. And I had just launched, <laughs> just launched. And I must have made about five casts and boom. Just like that. Kicked, yeah. And I just ran out of the log boom, went to the right, and just started working the trees I was going to work okay. all around outside of the log boom, and I just, as I was throwing through them. I've done well on that bank. And I'll tell you, oh. those fish come there, and, you yeah. know, to the wind, 
blows in there. Okay, and that's right. And blows in there. Because it used to blow me onto the bank, yeah, now that I think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. So yeah. the wind blows on there, it gives it that cover, that chop. Mm. So that fish came right there on it. That's so, sick. Yeah, yeah, that was another good one. But, oh, yeah, this, pic this picture right here is iconic for me. Because you had a copy of this one in the bragging board at Turner's forever. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Huh? So every time I'd go in there, man, I'd stare at those, at those pictures and be like, oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, that was the second day after the 14. Oh, that okay. was after that fish. So yeah. this is the 14 pounder. Yeah. yeah. On the worm key. In fact, Kelly uh, Popo took that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kelly. Shout out to Kelly. He's the one that took that picture. Okay, that's actually a pretty good photo, Kelly. Not bad, bro. Yeah, he did not a bad. great job on that. But it, who took this picture? Fired. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> must have been Barbara because we was only there the second day. They was gone. They didn't stay. And see, uh, like people don't appreciate what went into actually capturing a good photo back then. Yeah. Because yeah. now you have everything at your fingertips, and back yeah, then you, you had to carry an actual camera. And you can't even look at a girth on that. So, oh, and I goodness. also didn't turn that right. where you can really see it. Yeah. And you don't, you know, you didn't have the luxury of taking a hundred photos or I one know. good <laughs> angle, <laughs> right? Snap oh yeah. my goodness! I used That'd to be... carry those wind-up throwaways. Yeah. And you get what twenty-four Four, shots. Twenty-four shots. Yeah. And then you know you hope that you get one good shot out of them. And, but yeah, you got to take and. But yeah, that was the very next day after I got the 14. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that was, um, in fact, it was, uh, I got pictures somewhere and it shows you how big that fish is. That's 13, about nine or 10. I had 11 pounder with that, right? Oh. And I'm gonna show you a photo that how small the other fish look. Uh-huh. Somewhere. It's not easy to make an 11 pounder look small. That fish <laughs> made it look small. <laughs> I don't remember. It's somewhere, but yeah, this is some photos too. Of some other fish. These are the Polaroids, Polaroids. that Randy took up yep. there. That, that was your iPhone uh, X back then, <laughs> yeah. iPhone 10. See? Wow. Yeah, I think this is it here. And this is. Look at these. Was that that day? I think this is it. Yeah, yeah that's that big it. girl that's on it. your left hand. That 11 that's looks it. small. Now look at that. And that's 11 wow. pounder. Now look at the difference. Wow. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, going back to that point you're talking to, you know, when someone says, uh, oh, I got a 12, a 13, a 14. Like, do you realize how much of a difference that is in actual size, size. of the fish between weight? I and mean, I don't think most people do. Because you have to look at the girth of the fish. Yeah. You know, it's not more the length, but look at the 11 pounder and look at the, the 13. And that's why I've also never been um, a believer in like using those formulas. No, because all you of know, these They fish, give you a rough estimate. Yeah, it'll give you a rough estimate. And look at the that one, how long right. that one is. And yeah. that's just under 14. So imagine <laughs> if you had, to, like you said, that fish was February fish. Mm -hmm. That fish would have been 15 and change. Yeah, for sure. Here's some more small ones. Small ones. <laughs> Another. And that was a uh, one eleven. Wow. Swim bait fish? That's swim bait. All of these are swim bait oh, fish. Oh, wow. Anything February, you can tell the time when I got on clothes. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. The, the hat did it. Randy, the one too. All of these are the ones Randy did. Nice. So he See? had a lot of practice back oh, then. Yeah. Huh? See, 13. So that's, again, that's a picture of the... Uh, 1395. Yeah. Jeez. So here's a Gosh, Kelly Popo's bro. shot. Nice. So that's uh Randy, he took that too. Gosh, that, look at that build on that fish. That's insane. So you see uh mm. I just happened to keep all of these. And that's only ten pounds there. Only ten pounds. Yeah, <laughs> look at the size of that. <laughs> no, huh? Yeah. A couple more. That's so cool. Ten and an eight. Now you you caught and released these fish. Do you think you ever caught the same fish again? I you don't. Because Casitas is a pretty good sized lake. Yes, it, but yeah. at the same time, you know those fish kind of have home territories. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But these was migrating fish, okay. and also too you could see different times, and like one of the guys said. Uh, 
if you didn't have you got the same thing on you have to have jogging suits on with every fish <laughs> or are you should kind of <laughs> say you're supposed to be some fashion statement or what oh dude because that's what they would say this yeah. is the same fish yeah and then yeah. tucker look at him and said no it's not he's got something different on that that's but that was the thing and you're a bob marley fish oh yeah look at that <laughs> and that came right outside of the on crawdad point too okay yeah, that was a swim bait fish too. You get to see. That's awesome. Especially for the river. Now, this is probably that's a crawdad fish. You can see how it was dressed there. Okay. So, tell me about this crawdad fishing. And, you know, I'm trying to teach these younger guys about the 90s and how there was a real live bait culture, for especially uh, amongst the trophy bass fishermen back then. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys fish live crawdads, a lot of guys fish live shad when they could dip net them. Um, but that doesn't seem to happen anymore. Like you don't even see them for sale in the tackle shops no, anymore. No, that's definitely this, kind of faded away. This Quagga Muscle Deal that kind of did away with that. I never did the um, shad. Oh, how about mudsuckers? But um, did you ever try uh, not mudsuckers? Water dogs. My water dogs. I did try them. Oh, you did. Yeah, I tried water dogs. I just never had any luck oh, with them. Okay, but, I never yeah. once used a water dog for yeah. bait because they were too expensive for me. They're yeah, they two bucks expensive. a pop or something. Yeah, I was like, it was what? expensive. Well, like about you get six of them for like about sixteen dollars. Yeah, man. And, I was like, whoa, I can afford that. And I never had the confidence in them, but I'm like, you know, guys was catching fish on. Oh yeah, they you know? were. And uh, I didn't have the patience to <sighs> stick with it, but. I, I did fish crawdads. Okay. But the crawdads I fished, it was more the summertime deal mm. when the swim bait bite, you know. Now, Interesting. When I started, See, I didn't know that. I always, I, th I always thought you caught them like in that same time frame that you're catching in the swim bait fishing. Oh, too. Well, you would, but the only problem with that, you want the aggressive fish mm. that's moving for trout. Yeah. That was the difference. Now, you can catch them uh, with crawdads doing that okay. time. Okay. Because also, too, they looking for places to spawn and the big females are moving up right. so they will be searching but uh, my thing was when I seen trout come scooping out of the water those fish are on the move they mm -hmm. were searching gotcha. they was looking for something bigger so I decided to stick with the bigger bait because you felt like that was your best chance you know, you're playing mm -hmm. the odds in that in that scenario yeah and uh, but they did hit crawdads during that time because wow. we have caught them in uh, like a March or uh, or after the spawn. Okay. You can start getting once they start gathering back up, coming off the beds. But before the spawn, the way to go was uh, well, for me I would say mm -hmm. was the swim bait, and because you're going to get a bigger fish. You know? For sure. And this shows it here. Yeah, the proof is there. You're holding it. Yeah, you know, and then you can get Nine. crawfish. Because they love crawfish, you know, that's one of their oh, favorite yeah. foods, you know. I remember I mean, the first time camping at Casitas when I was a kid, uh, walking yeah. the shoreline at night. It used to be covered yeah. in those big, big red craze. Red, and a lot of guys don't like to use those, mm. you know. Yeah, I remember you used to buy them all. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck, he's buying all the big red ones. And then uh, four fish, oh, yeah. man. three elevens and a ten. Now, where you can get that at, <laughs> you know. Very few places, my man. Yeah, some rain Very few that. places. He was like, man. And that oh, was just great. one of those days, man. That they was just stacked up. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at the color on the one on the right. See, I didn't even... Like, look at the belly on the one on the left. <laughs> and I know. Look at it. It's a 10 and a 9. And then, I mean, look how big those fish are. <laughs> I know, huh? And then when somebody tell you this fish, you got one like 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. And you look at this, he's like, well... <laughs> uh, there's a couple of small ones there okay. i remember those was optima fish okay yeah that was out there on deer slope okay yeah, yeah i like i like fishing deer slope yeah big fish come up out of oh, that deep water out there too bad deer slope is like well, high those and dry are now fish in okay that came in uh august Wow, the one on the right still or the one on the far left of your hand is actually mm. still pretty big Belly wise, yep, that was crawfish. You could see the mm -hmm. that was out there at Samsung's. You know, you know where that's at? No, going out there toward the uh, the dam. There's a, a little hump out there, 
and as you're going toward the dam, there's a point before you get there, about 150 yards from there, uh -huh. there's a sunken island out there. Okay. And when the wind blows out there, you uh, sit up on top of it and throw it out. Oh, gotcha. And let it sink. And that was on one of the stalker troughs. Mm. And just rolling it uphill. And it was windy and you dumped that deal out there. Well, that's crawdad fish. That's August time. Okay. Coming in right at the end of the day. That's probably like 8.30 at night. Yeah. And Barbara, same hey, thing. Hey, doing Some work. Crawfish, yeah. And Randy said, keep bringing them up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's another crawfish. Wow. See, I, I used to fish a little crayfish um, growing up at Pudding Stone and stuff, and sometimes Paris, but That's I never caught bad. a really big one doing it. Yeah, and it's the same thing, putting in time. Yeah, putting yeah. In time, and I did and I did Confidence and stuff, and same thing see right up at randy's little shop there mm -hmm. yeah, i was optima fish there nice but yeah fella got lucky see the fact that you can actually look at these pictures that are you know over two decades old sometimes and know exactly what it, happened you know between or behind the actual it, photo look at you too march that was at the end of march you guys are killing Crawfish. it crushing it no that's this is why the big fish thing is special to me because I can Aubrey. remember every single one of these fish for I sure. I know, and that's the thing. I'm, you know, I can't remember other stuff, but no, you can you remember can't. when you no. fish. But yeah, yeah, we was getting them, and I took my cousin out. He came out here, and got one. Awesome. Yeah, look at him. Okay, these are stripers. Big stripers. Yeah, yeah. That was when I they talked me into going up to. Uh, now this is Castig. That's when I got that. Uh, that Wolverine shirt. Big comic book fan, yeah. obviously. That's awesome. <laughs> this from from uh, the seducer. Oh, when okay. Thing, so when did you start throwing that bait? 2008. Wow. In 2008, I had a friend, this fellow, a school teacher. He got a cabin up there. So he goes shopping and found this one bait, this bait. They had this one bait up there called you were, uh, Night Moves. Wow, I really? call it Bob Seeger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Look at that thing. Yeah, yeah, I remember you brought that out the first time you went fishing with me, and yeah. I'm like, that thing looks crazy. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about it, I took it up to Castaic. And uh, Castaic. And I was fishing with. Uh, uh, Rod Digpen. Okay. And he's like, what is that thing? <laughs> I said, uh, they brought that back and said, I know somebody in California uh, throw this thing. Mm -hmm. And he, sure enough, I took it up there and uh, he said, I don't like the orange on the bottom. And he was throwing it and nothing happened. And I said, let me see this. And it looked like a big Sammy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On top. Big sure walking enough, bait. I'm rolling up and all of a sudden I turned and I said, man, it looked, and crashed right next to to the boat a 17 pounder eats it there he was eating cookies cookies <laughs> went all over the boat and he's like man and i'm like well it works so we i think the picture, orange is fine and i sent to uh dave and told him your bait works man wow so that's why he had those ones made up the custom color so now you got a whole stockpile of them. okay yeah. so th that's the reason they did a trout pattern was for you yeah and they've almost gone i've been selling them on ebay for okay. 19 bucks and then I have the, he made two. He had another one, that color, Electro. See this color right here? Oh, yeah. I Sold all of those, man. Those went for like $39. Wow. Sold every one of those, you know. Even um, Mark Agassi was oh, putting yeah. them in his store. He down still there. got them. Yeah, he's yeah. got some, yeah. So it's like, I don't know if he get them made now, but those things there, the guys over at Willow Beach are getting them mm -hmm. on, the, on these things. I heard that bites uh, picking back up again. Picking back up, they've been getting yeah. trout again. Yeah. I, I, in fact, I got a, a message from a guy last night that he um, took one of the baits, the trout pattern one, uh -huh. and had somebody wrap it in a different color. Oh. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay. okay. And it looks great to wh whoever oh, did it. Yeah, for. some of those wraps look really doing, nice. Doing real good on them up there. But yeah, this bait here, when I took it to Pyramid, oh man. I was just killing them up there. Because I guarantee you they hadn't seen anything like that before. No. Not in that profile, not that size, not that back and forth walk yeah. the dog action. All, all of those. <laughs> all of those right there. Straight, Straight up. up uh, yeah. 
Oh man. All of those right there was on the seducing that. And I think the and that one up at the top, that's got the that was on the electro too. Wow. All of those was on this page. And they were like, man, I can't believe it. I said, Well, I knew they would use a big bag like that because I couldn't find a popper big enough. Yeah, for uh, sure. Man. And it's a heavy bait to throw. This thing is probably eight, mm. nine ounces. Mm -hmm. And I'm throwing it with the, the G Lumen stuff. Okay. Out there with 25 pound tests. And, but you also, too, got to put a, a snap. Okay, so you're a big proponent of the snap, too, because well, I fish a snap on all my hard baits. Yeah, because it's going to make the line weak eventually up in the mm. front. And then you hook a big fish, it's going to snap right off. So if you put the snap up there, you're not going to have that problem. You tie it direct with mono. Eventually, it's going to get weak. You gotcha. put a snap on it, you know, if it does not hinder the uh, action on the bait. Okay. And every one I caught had a snap on it. Nice. And I recommend to guys, if you fish this bait, to oh, yeah. use a snap. You know? I use, um, I'm very snap heavy on my baits. Yeah, yeah, snap and then we, uh, they still going to eat it. Oh, know? yeah. Uh, a lot of guys don't like to, they like to tie direct, which is fine, but whatever's worked for you, but I put the snap on there. And, I'm with uh, you, man. Yeah, yeah. So all of these fish, it had a snap on these things when I was throwing this bait. Because it would just break off at the most opportune time. And then you got a fish coming up on you, you know that if it eat it, it might break off. Yeah. And every fish you lose, you know that's the biggest one, right? Oh, every time, brother, <laughs> every time. So you, you talk about 25-pound line, is that what you use? 25 pounds is what I use. Okay. Yeah, even swim baits uh, for the Optima. Mm -hmm. uh, Cast egg lure, the worm king, the stalker trout, and the seducer. <laughs> Pretty much the five baits I fished for the last, what, since 91? Wow. 92? So those are the baits. And this is the, uh, I threw pencil popper, and I went to the seducer when it got here in 2008, and I've been throwing this ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Big this top water bites are pretty hard to beat. This one? And that Electro was my favorite two top water baits. I, I got one out of that. In fact, I have one here. Look at this, guys. You can't fake this. And, and of course, oh, yeah. this glows in the dark. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, you just light it up, okay. shine a light on it. And then at night, whatever you turn the lights off, this thing here glows. That's pretty cool. Yes, it is. I didn't know if he knew it did that. Mm. But the guy from that Musky Innovation made him, and I guess they didn't do well up there. Hmm. But I said, just send them to me. I'll take care of them. Heck yeah. Them. Yeah. And these guys on, because Mark, he uh, caught his 21 pounder out of oh, yeah. a pair or something. Yeah, they were on a little bit of a bite out there, too, yeah. for sure. I got my biggest one out of Paris. Out of Paris also, yeah. right? Mine came on a triple trout. Triple trout? 30 pounds. Uh, was 30 pound, uh, 4 ounce. How big was the uh, triple trout? 10 inch. Was the 10 inch one? 10 inch heavy. Because everybody was throwing top water baits on them for weeks. Yeah, yeah. But everybody. Was and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sink it out. Yeah. 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 And that's where the same thing with the large mouth. Yeah. They don't come up, you sink a bait on them, they're yeah. going to take it. And then I'm pretty sure I got the biggest one that season. Um, at least. Not counting the guys that snuck in on the shoreline. Yeah, yeah, you know they're gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, three fish, eleven pounds on one. Oh my goodness! Imagine you just like man. You know, think about, I see that and I think about those days. I said, man, imagine 2006, and I wanted to get one fish was my goal. Yeah, yeah. And then when I got those, I was like, oh my goodness. Well, I think and that's I, the thing, right? When your mindset um, switches to chasing this caliber of fish you unknowingly give yourself opportunities at those kind of days right because yeah. if you were just out there fishing like 99 percent you know percent of the people out there fishing that would never happen That's on a worm or a crankbait or no. a jerk bait or a little top water you might get one maybe That's but you would not catch three no and then, and then my thing, I don't think I would have got that one because those was looking to kill trout. Yeah, yeah those that's fish, right. Yeah, they was looking for something big, and you can see they hadn't spawned out yet. Mm. Those fish was ready to uh, pull up on beds. That's great. And before and you can see February, that's your pre-spawn time, so that's the time you want to throw yeah. the big stuff. You know? 
Absolutely. Yeah, now this fish, look when it was caught. Yeah. Me. And look at the belly on that. Yeah. Fish still haven't spawned yet. My best times up there are actually late May into June when they kind of start grouping up. Yeah, when they group back up. Man, and start to they start, back. they act like calico bass in the kelp. You know, I throw across the main lake point and they would just surface up from the bottom. I'm like, oh my goodness, here they come. <laughs> Yeah. It was the wildest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen anything else like it since. Yeah, they start wolf pack. You know? oh. Same thing with these pre and post spawn fish. Uh -huh. one, 11 pound fish. Wow. On the same day, and then the pre spawn fish, and that was amazing.